It's Sunday. It's Sunday, I said. <laughs> and we just finished night one of WrestleMania. Right now, you are rocking with everything pro wrestling. Everything pro wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I have right next to me. This is not Clash of the Podcast, but it might as well be. Clash of the Podcast every Monday, 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. We got Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Sean Hubbard in the house. What is good, Sean? I am going to say what I said off there on the air. Uh, Conrad Dirt, I am blessed and privileged. Uh, no cap to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, yes, so. Rob, don't worry about the intern. The intern is put away soundly. It is all good. It is all good. Um, we got the man, the legend, the man they call Derek in the house. Yo, yo. Um, we are going to get into this whole WrestleMania card. I have to give a big shout out first to my man, Ant, A-N-T, Won't Stop. He's in the chat. Ant gave me a song to use for the opener tonight, so that's exactly what we're going to use. He has a song for uh, WrestleMania t- uh, inspired by it, so you're going to hear some lyrics that make sense to it. Check it out, then we're going to get into this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go. It's a lot harder than some think, yeah. but there can only be one king, one road to one ring, and that could only mean one thing. Couldn't be a more worthy time. WrestleMania 39. Yeah. Think it's time for a redesign from undefined to a redefined. Ooh. Cody Rose gets the story told versus Roman Reigns on the grand stage. Fireworks gonna overload because you can't contain his outlandish ways. Crowd is slow because it's uncontrolled, can't be explained. No time for games. Tickets sold, not being bold, just stating facts, not naming names. There's more than one royal wrestling fan. Uh-huh. I'll say it twice so maybe you'll understand me yeah. When I'm done I'll leave a legacy like Randy I'll give you nightmares so stay away from the brandy what? 39 times let's make it 40 I'm here for the gold along with all the glory Trying to make everyone proud who came before me It's Wrestlemania let's finish the story 39 times let's make it 40 I'm here for the gold along with all the glory Trying to make everyone proud who came before me It's Wrestlemania, let's finish the story Top of the hour, Edge vs. Valor, Hell in a Cell, the final encounter Everybody wants the top spot Well done, well done, big shout out to my man Ant Uh, Always appreciate the love brother Thank you for always letting me use your songs for pay-per-views Whether it be WWE, AEW Everything pro wrestling, this is where you keep it locked. Like I said, show by the fans, for the fans. Um, we're going to talk a little WrestleMania night one, man. Hubs, I'm coming to you first, man. <laughs> Overall, man, what did you think of uh, of of tonight, man? Once again, third time, uh, you know, number of completion. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot express to you gentlemen how devastated i am right now i as conrad knows as derek knows am a massive supporter of the bloodline um i'm probably more of a jay uso fan than the entire bloodline as a whole but i am a fan of the bloodline and supporter of the bloodline and to see them go down after 600 plus days um, we all knew what was coming as soon as uh, Jay turned his back on. Sorry about that. As soon as Jay that's that SummerSlam, on, getting ready for SummerSlam. Everybody's <laughs> fired up outside right now. My block is hot in a good way. Um, but it, everybody knew as, as soon as Jay turned his back on on Sammy on Raw, what was going to happen tonight. Uh, but I was hoping against hope, and um, man, it, it went down, and uh, it was an awesome match. Don't get it twisted, but. What a devastating night for me. <laughs> it's rough, but great show. It was interesting. Derek, what did you think of the uh, overall show? Uh, overall, as a whole, <laughs> as a whole, I'm going to say WrestleMania was kind of mid. Mm. Mm. Kind of mid. I, 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 I felt like the... I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get into it. I, I, just, I just felt like it was meant to me. This man, this man's out here hating. It's a full time <laughs> job, folks. Full time job. But we'll get into uh, a lot of this. 
Um, big shout outs to the chat right now. Let me see who we've got in here. Positively E yelling, this is my brutality. Ant won't stop yelling, let's go. Appreciate you, Ant. BJ in the house. Night one impressed me more than I thought it would. Uh, e said, them lowered expectations out. <laughs> Matt Lopez said, good evening. What a show. Yeah, E have lowered expectations and get a banger show. Mm. Uh, Rob also in the house. I see you, Rob. Uh, I hope work went well, brother. I know that got you held up. Uh, XG Dub was good. Was good. Lady Kenzie, that was a hell of a night. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> e writing, Sir Hub. Sir Hub. <laughs> <laughs> No Lara in the house. What's up, No Lara? Uh, I'm sure Dom had the weakest entrance in WrestleMania history. What was that entrance? Man, I, I listen as soon as I heard them sirens. You know what I was? Holler if you hear me. <laughs> I, I just thought a big. Every time I hear sirens, I think a big pop of pump. Um, we won't mention that other Steiner guy. We're gonna leave that right where it is too. Don't bring it up because I ain't, I'm not addressing it. Uh, you you had a hot ride in the driveway. Derek is forever the undisputed player hated champ. <laughs> Listen, we're about to get in the show. Thank you for rocking with us. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Also in the description, Sean's YouTube channel's in there. Make sure you subscribe to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. You get wrestling, combat sports, UFC, boxing. He covers it all. Show him some love, all right? Uh, much appreciated. And that goes for every, anyone on YouTube and audio listeners. Come show us some love on this side of things, too, man. It's much appreciated. Let's talk, man. Miz came out to open up the show, and they actually had a lot of, like, talk with uh snoop being involved in this um like i i didn't really think snoop was going to be as involved as he was tonight i don't know if you guys got the same thing i mean miz being a host kind of lame i don't know I, I don't i don't know how i feel about miz these days like he's not the guy at wrestlemania 27 that you have main event over some people yeah i don't know yeah, that's a fact i agree I agree. He, he did what he was supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like the celebrity appearances, they need someone they can clown on. And now they just put that person there like, this is what he's going to do. And you kind of know what you're going to get from this. So uh, a, a, a superstar like Snoop, an outside superstar like Snoop, you just hope that he doesn't screw it up too bad. You know what I'm trying to say? That's kind of like my perspective on all the celebrities. Like, you know, the Kim Kardashians, the Snoop Dogs, the whoever, the Pete Roses. Like, you just hope that they get in there say what they need to say, stick to the script, don't veer off track, don't freestyle, because that's this is not your show. Just take it easy and everything will be fine. So, Right? Um, I, I won't get too deep into the Miz stuff because there's more of that later, trust. Okay. Uh, let's get to the opening contest. We started off with Austin Theory versus John Cena for the United States Dipset Heavyweight Championship. Um John Cena went into this and he hurt this young man, I think, in a promo with what he said. Because he said, even if you win, you lose against me. Um, but Cena went in here and they did a great deal of business. I really don't have a lot of notes on this one. This was not a match that did too much. You could tell Cena hadn't been in the ring. He had a lot of rope burn on the back. Uh, he wasn't tanned up like he used to be. This isn't this isn't John Cena of old, and we knew that going into it, but I don't know. I I thought we would we would have gotten more in this one. Maybe maybe my expectations were too high. What did you think, Sean? I think John Cena's uh, bald spot is massive. That's what I think. And it, um, it, it, it's no no you have no you have a baldy. There's a big difference. You made a decision, and I respect that decision. John Cena has not made a decision. John Cena has seen his. I know John Cena has taken a mirror and he's gone like this, and he knows exactly what he sees back there. He's a multimillionaire. I don't know if Hair Club for Men is still a thing, but either go all the way or not because that was massive and it was quite distracting. That's the only thing I watched the entire match. Anyway, at the end of the day, though, John Cena did a, had a decent accounting of himself, but um, I don't know. It was a short match. It was kind of an uneventful match. Um, the You Can't See Me by the crowd was massively loud. I thought that was pretty cool for nostalgic purposes, but... Other than that, just kind of a whole hum performance and um, kind of a cheap way to let Austin Theory win if we're trying to build him up because a low blow to, to win by cheating doesn't really necessarily build you up. It kind of ties into that point you just mentioned about if you win, you lose. Um, I didn't I didn't agree with that. Uh, I didn't agree with that premise if he won correctly. But now that he won with a low blow, like what does that accomplish? It just establishes him more as a heel, and that's what you were saying anyway. So exactly. what are we really doing here? 
that that's how I took it, at least with this one. Derek, do you want to add anything to this, or have we? <laughs> Hopefully, this is the end for John Cena. <laughs> I'm done with John. Bro. I, I don't think it is. They said Cody asked him that when they were on the stage together, like, come on, one more match with me. Oh my god. Yeah. They they said a lot of that. They wanted him to uh to do that. Uh the chat has got some interesting comments. Ooh, ooh. BJ came in and said this was the worst match on the show tonight. Agree. Uh <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. He, uh cena still can run down that long ramp yeah yeah the cameraman was trying to keep up too uh cena probably got the stephen a smith dome not everyone can look good with the ball like fred rosser <laughs> uh that match was not good jesus said felt like a vince move <laughs> tiana came in Derek hating already yep you already know <laughs> player haters ball uh doesn't matter john cena destroyed theory in the promo see that's all people gonna remember is that promo Promo, promo, promo. This won't go down as Brett and Owen at WrestleMania 10. That's all I can say for the old. There you go. Good job. Good job out of you. But, Sean, I will say this. The next match coming up that we're going to talk about real quick, this is my sleeper match of the night. This is what we slept on, and I was like, yo, this was this was pretty good. Mm -hmm. It was a four-way tag team match. You had Ricochet and Braun Strowman. This must be some type of cruel punishment for a joke he made. And they are a tag team versus Alpha Academy, the Street Profits, and the Viking Raiders. This was a lot better than I thought. It would felt like a car crash a little bit, but I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was good. Derek, yay, nay? It, it, it was 50-50. It was good, but it was sloppy at the same time. Sean, we're moving on from that. <laughs> Sean, what, what did you think of the match? I'm gonna t let me say my whole statement. You know how I am, Conrad. Let me say my whole statement, and then it'll all make sense when I wrap it up. I was devastated when I saw this match because I knew I was coming on here. That match was the reason, the only reason why I was not happy to be joining you, gentlemen, tonight. Why? Because I would have to admit that I was wrong. I was I was correct about who I said would win the match. I predicted Street Profits. But I predicted Street Profits in a dud. And that match proved me wrong. Everybody, Derek, you know you my guy, but I don't know what you saw. That was a really, really good match. And the spot where, um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank, Ford and Dawkins. The spot where Dawkins tackled Braun outside the ring was stellar. Monstrous. Monstrous. Unbelievable. And a big shout out, and I'm gonna give it back to you guys. A big shout out to Titus O'Neil for his commentary. I thought you did a great job. He did. He, he, you know what? No, it, I, I think I think it got sloppy at the at the point where I, I can't I can't do the Braun Strowman around the ring. Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all what it really is. No matter what show, what program, Derek does not like more than like four people in a match. Oh, that's then Derek I'm starts thinking it gets too crazy. They're doing too much. Yeah. He, he thinks the big dudes are going to have to start. When people start jumping off the top rope one after another, Derek's like, no bueno, bro. We can't have this. We cannot have people all just doing this. Braun's doing Val Venus splashes off the top rope. <laughs> all types of stuff are happening. I get it. I get it. He's still hating because he doesn't know how hard it is. Those matches are hard to put together. I know they're hard to put together, bro, but they like this. Look, listen, bro. We all saw what happened to Keith Lee when he tried to do it. Nah, we're not bringing that up right now. <laughs> you guys, did you guys? I'm talking about that um that Dawkins spot specifically. You guys didn't get thrilled by that one. That was no, awesome. no, no, we bought, we bought. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. we that, that that was definitely dope. But I, I just don't, I can't do all the extra stuff where where it belongs to other people where it shouldn't belong to. Gotcha. gotcha. Like, bro, so we get your big butt off the ring, off the top. Of <laughs> well, I don't like I don't like Braun Strowman. That's common knowledge. Yeah. Speaking of people you don't like, Derek, oh. I just had to sneak that well into the podcast one good time. <laughs> just one time for the one time, just so people knew. But um. I don't know. Uh, everybody in here, even if it was good, unfortunately, bathroom break when you look at the list, but I enjoyed it. BJ telling the truth. He hating too with you, Derek, but he's, he's telling the truth. <laughs> Derek's got to watch Wrestle Kingdom every day if he keeps it up. I'm trying to tell you, bro, he ain't ready for that. Juke, Derek's no-no's more than four in a match at steak, egg, and cheese bagels. 
He he needs to eat one, bro. I'm telling you. Sean, Sean steak, egg, and cheese bagels. Yay or nay? You you in on those or nah? Steak, egg, and cheese bagel from McDonald's? Yeah. Um, the best thing McDonald's has ever come with, up with ever. That's not a breakfast food. <laughs> That's all I needed. That's all I needed. One oh, time. McDonald's got that one. They got a lot of things wrong, I'm, but they got that right, brother. Team, team Monday's over here right now, baby. That's how it goes. Come on, Hubs. Don't do me like that. Bro. Oh, man. I'm so Hubs, 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 Hubs is about to get his laugh off on me, I think, for this one. Uh -oh. The third match on the card tonight. Oh, my. Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. This was an interesting one. This is when I finally started taking actual notes for the show because I was like, okay, I got something that I can take notes on. The last match was a car crash. I couldn't mention anything but the uh, Ricochet shooting star press, uh, Street Profits hit the frog splash and get the win. Like, it was just craziness. And this Dalton Dawkins tackle. Oh, yeah. Oh. Bra will forever be mean because of that. Forever oh, mean. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Logan Paul comes out. I felt I wrote Shades of Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 12. That's all I could think of when I saw it instantly. He's on the little hook. He's flying around. He's got his drink. This is this is what WWE 2K games are made of, right? Like it was it was a cute it was a cute parody, but didn't it didn't hit for me. <laughs> didn't hit for me. I, I don't know. I just thought of Shawn Michaels. Oh, Seth I thought comes of Shawn Michaels out, too, but I wasn't impressed. Somewhere in Anaheim, someone's crying right now for Sean's, for Sean's entrance. <laughs> Seth Rollins comes out. Yo, I don't know what dude was wearing. I don't know what this. I still, I'm telling y'all, I don't care what Sean says. I don't care what anyone says. I will not get what this is supposed to be. He has a choir. He, they're singing. You could clearly tell they did not trust the audience to be on beat because the second time when he went over, they were all like, oh, and then you heard the recording. They were like, yeah, shut them up immediately because they were off and everything. It was a cool entrance. They gave it to Seth. Listen, I'm here for Seth as a performer. All right. The entrance is part of it, though. People love it. Um but I, this can't, match I can't for the life of me understand, and I don't know if Derek's on the same page with you with this one. Seth Rollins his music means something. And I don't understand how you, as a historian, Conrad, can sit up here and not recognize the importance of sing-along. Sing-along sing -along segments or sing-along music or sing-along whatever is part of what makes the business good. Like, it's Seth good. Rollins' music is epic, bro. I don't understand what's happening right but now. I, but listen, listen. I saw an interview with him in, uh, was it Ariel Hawani or someone? It might have been, no, the Cody had Ariel Hawani. It was someone else. Seth had an interview with, oh, Daniel Cormier. They had an interview with the sit-down. Did you see this where he was like, yeah, where he was talking about how he felt he should have been in the main event no, of no, WrestleMania? Think, think, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what came to my mind? You know why you're not in the main event? You're doing a gimmick that feels mid-card. You're doing something that is not going to get you there. I'm being honest. <laughs> like he's got to, he's got to have something that's like, yo, that dude is that dude. This is he where, can do it in the ring. Easy. This is where I show respect to Conrad and Derek on y'all show, and keep it brief because otherwise I'd go off right now. Seth Rollins has a gimmick that is main event worthy right now. That entrance could have been tomorrow night against Roman Reigns. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut it down right there. I don't know. I don't want to include Derek until Derek makes a statement. I don't know if he's with you or against you. That was awesome. But I'll leave it there. I'm, I'm going to leave it here, too. We're going to get to the performance of this because that's that was the good part. Derek definitely rocks with me on this because Derek liked the previous gimmick he had before yeah. that with the group versus so, this. So when he came out as as the uh, just the Messiah, mm -hmm. that that was that was a gimmick that I could get behind because I showed I showed uh, CJ this hubs. If you Google or not Google, uh, if you YouTube, um, what was it called? The Sacrament. Yeah, the Sacrament. If you YouTube the sacrament, it gives you cultic vibes. Now, the Messiah, I'm not saying go the same way, but if you take that persona from the sacrament, give it to Seth Rollins as the Messiah, mm -hmm. 
you generally have the same feel, but you get the 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 current sing along with that. With that, if you give me that on top of that, I'm good with it. Right now, I can't. It's like it's like Bray Wyatt and Red State. I always made yes. the equivalent of the preacher from Red State was what Bray Wyatt was doing. He's rambling, but he's yes. got people wrapped up into what he's saying, yes. but he's really not telling you the truth. That that's how I always take it from like movies and stuff too. I see. I no, hear oh, Derek's point. I see, what I see what you guys are saying. I mean, I love it because I like sing along. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still a kid in that regard. I like sick to me. If you get something that sticks, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, Fandango, I'm not going to go that far. Fandango was terrible. But when fin- fin- when that was for like that year that when that music hit, everybody went crazy. You're telling me y'all weren't feeling that? Oh, no, no. Oh, no I, I was. Go, I'm good yeah. with the sing along. I just don't get the gimmick that fits with the sing along. So, right, okay. I do 100% with what he's saying. Yeah, I don't, get the, I don't get the gimmick with that. By the way, I was there when Fandango debuted. Shout out to Fandango because he had someone from the University of Buffalo dancing with him, too. Nice. Always respected that. Nice. Well, in the beginning, then he switched to Summer Ray, and it was, it was all a dream. Terrible. So, Logan Paul, Seth Rollins, they come out. This was pretty good. I can't. Yo, Logan Paul did a jump up to the top rope and hit a smooth moonsault. He missed he it, but it was good. He did. That, that was fresh. That was fresh. It was good. Got to respect I, that. Kid. He, he's an athletic, like, I don't, a freak. I don't know what else to say about him. You really can't take the athleticism away from him at all. Yeah, I just don't want to see him boxing. Uh, let me not get Sean started. I just don't, I just don't want to see the boxing any more of those those easy fights, man. Need some need some real comp now, boys. Oh my god, don't get me started. You're right. Rollins hits the curb stomp onto his hand onto the stairs because apparently he's they're doing the Lex Luger gimmick. Titanium. <laughs> yeah, they're running with that thing. Me and Derek caught the best glimpse though of the punch he did when he threw it. He threw the punch like that, oh, and we were like, yeah. "He pulled that punch something massive." It was it was a little uncomfortable to watch. Well, we remember what happened to Big Show with Floyd, though. Like we can't we can't have no part two of that. Floyd was really throwing them things and broke. True. That's why Big Show's nose has never been the same. Yeah, he broke that thing. I have no way out. I remember. Mm-hmm. And they said he was mad after Floyd hit. Like, oh, oh no, no, yeah. So seven foot giant. Oh man. <laughs> so when he came out logan paul's always advertising this prime i don't drink this stuff i don't buy crypto from the dude i don't know what he's doing so they come out with this prime suit and then there's someone in the suit called ksi now listen i have a younger intern i'm sure sean has an older intern who who is this dude chat someone cool explain this to me who is this guy uh, he he's he's a he's a boxer. He's a he's a he's a YouTube sensation turned boxer, similar to the Paul brothers. Um, he's faced a couple of people, and he's and he's one of those gimmicky guys. He's he's somebody who has millions of followers, similar to the Pauls, not quite on that level. And they're friends. And I think, and I'm going to say this real quick. I think that bringing out this guy is part of the reason why I can't cross over to liking uh, Logan Paul in WWE because Logan Paul has a lot of likable qualities, his athleticism, his love for the business. But when you bring out this other YouTuber, it's like if you were just doing your own thing by yourself, maybe bring out your brother. It's, maybe that's as far as it goes. But what he did tonight and with the, the prime mascot, and it, it was pathetic. I mean, it really took away from his performance, which was actually pretty good. Yeah, it was. It, I, I I enjoyed it, um, but I, I agree. Like having K, KSI come out, it's like, mm, what are we trying to do here? It's too much. Yeah, Seth grabs this dude, pulls him on the table while Logan Paul is like drinking. They actually kind of did it perfect to where he was looking away and then he jumped. He's like, oh, in midair, like wrong guy, wrong guy. They crash and burn. They get back into the ring. Um, after that, Rollins is uh, going for – he gets hit with a GTS. I'm, I'm going to need y'all to stop taking shots. I know now. It's got to be trying to be funny. <laughs> Buckshot, Lariat, and GTSs. I see you, Logan. I'm watching you. I'm peeping the game from afar. By the way, uh, I, watched, I watched you guys on Wednesday night. I, obviously, I watch you guys every Wednesday night to show love and support. Conrad, you are really heavy on the CM Punk bandwagon. It's starting to get uncomfortable, brother. 
No, 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 no. no. no we a little can... uncomfortable. Hold on. Derek, Derek, now, Derek, now, now I'm Derek, gonna swear Derek, right now. I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable, saw... bro. No, Derek's with me on this because we saw a lot of the bitch assness of people. Because anytime something positive comes out about CM Punk, have you noticed something negative comes out immediately after? No one sees these parallels. I'm drawing. I'm just crazy, man. Oh, Chris Jericho's like, well, if I would work with him, if Tony told me to, and it's it's not my AEW's gonna be fine with or without him. Why do you need to say that? Why do you? Why don't you just shut up? Everybody wants to get out of you guys. Just shut up. But you can't do that. You can't have that. I'm, listen, you know you're my dog, both of you. I'm just saying it seems like you have taken a stance of CM Punk advocacy to a little bit higher of a level lately. I've already said the bad part. He messed up at the media scrum. He was quiet for months. Okay. Months okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want no smoke. I don't want any smoke. I don't want any smoke. I I'm, just, saying, I'm just saying your CM Punk advocacy has been at an all-time high. That's all I'm saying. That's all right, because I see it at an all-time low with many others. And it's disappointing <laughs> that I see all of you riding the coattails of Chris Jericho. <laughs> Hangman, Hangman don't want to talk about nothing. Hangman's over it. Of course you are, because you started it. Oh. Yeah, of course you're over it. I'm done. Yo, I don't want I don't want any thing. smoke, I promise you. I don't want any smoke. I'm done. I'll save that for Wednesdays. The <laughs> night he comes back, unbearable stream. I promise you. Okay. I promise you. Just come in and leave a like and listen. It's gonna be unbearable for everybody. I mean, I've heard listen, I've heard you talk about I've heard you talk about your beautiful family. I've heard you talk about our show, y'all show, you and Derek stuff. I've never the vigor. The vigor and vibrance that you speak about CM Punk. That's my dog, man. Listen, I admit, I'm biased when it comes to Punk. That's my dog. But the slander, the slander, certain things will make me mad. Talking bad about CM Punk, acting like Shawn Michaels is a jabron these days. People do that all the time. <laughs> Bringing up his ball spot. Don't act like Shawn wouldn't have took your girl back in 96. Cut it out right now. All right? We don't bring up certain things like that. The slander must stop. That's what I'm here for. No I respect slander. it, brother. I respect it. <laughs> Logan Paul goes for a coast to coast because he is the new Shane McMahon. Apparently, he eats a super kick and a curb stop and takes the L. I thought it was a, a fitting ending, a little long, like he said. Yeah, but it, it was fitting. It was. Um, I, I, I'm I'm a little disappointed though, bro. We didn't get a sling blade. Mm. I don't. That was the first time I could never say sling blade all night because usually I hit sling blade, <laughs> but I couldn't say it tonight. <laughs> Uh, I felt the fly. It was disrespectful. No, I didn't take it because of that with Owen. I, th I took more of Sean from that, at least from my take. Mm. Um, I'm just going to the chat real quick. Seth Rollins told Rihanna Super Bowl halftime look. Nah, Seth bro, Rollins. That, that, that was definitely not that. That was Lady Gaga right there. Yo, Seth yeah. Rollins had leftover yeah. ribbon from the Christmas and used it for the robe. Logan Paul comes out with uh, the douche from South Park. What? Uh, and says he agrees. I don't know which part we had. Uh, let me see here. Rollins was supposed to get not be the Messiah, aka biting off of Kenny by God Omega. <laughs> now, how you get away with that? If it were '98, Seth would have would be Al Snow right no, now. No, Al Snow, come on now. No, e, come you make some solid points. You could disagree with me all you want, but him comparing Seth 2023 to Al Snow is just ridiculous. Al, Al Snow was the man, though. I, even know, I liked Al always. I would say that match was better than the Rihanna performance at the halftime show. Oh, come on now. We ain't going to talk about my girl Ruby really like that now. Take it easy. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett is uh, looking for one of his old ring gears. That, dude, that's who I thought of when I saw the joint around his neck with the uh, straps before he took it off. I thought of old Jeff Jarrett instantly. Wow. The mounted punches were coming from Idaho. Yeah, he did send me a message saying he thought some potatoes were getting thrown in that matchup. Oh, yeah. You don't know who KSI is, really? He's been a YouTuber for a long time. Stuff with PewDiePie. Yeah, yeah. I, I follow the locals a little bit when it comes to this YouTube stuff. Uh, oh, this dude, they switched seats when the cops got pulled over the paws on some beaver stuff, allegedly. I have no clue. Thank you, Hubs. Ah, people must have loved. Hubs, don't start it. See, Hub. And also, Prime as a sports drink is way better than Gatorade ingredient-wise, as far as I can tell. Okay. I know nothing about this. I usually don't drink any of those other. I, I'm a water strictly kind of guy, truthfully. I don't mess with any of stuff. Have you had that prime drink, anybody? No. I have. I have. It's pretty. It's pretty regular to me. It's something. If you've had one, you've had them all. Uh, sports drinks. 
He's going to be CM Punk's wise man next. All right. <laughs> GTS is Kenta, not Punk. <laughs> I, have, right. I have never, I have never, I've been working with you for years now. And we have be, we've gone from strictly podcast buddies to friends. I have never seen you like this before. Derek, what is, do you, I mean, is it just me? He is passionate about this thing. See, now see, HBK's eye, that's another one. Leave that man alone. We don't know why that happened. We don't know what happened. It could have been from Jericho. We don't know what happened with that. Leave it alone, all right? See, HBK can't have nothing. This is why Brett's better. They just dogged this man, slander, just left, right, everywhere you go, just slander. Conrad loves punk the way punk loves bread. <laughs> okay. I've never seen you like this before, bro. It's pretty, it's pretty yeah, concerning. Here we go. Here we go. Slander right here. You can keep one eye on the past and one eye on the future. See? Done. Listen, I, was, I, got, I got to say, like, he, he's always been a CM Punk, like, number one fan. Like, right. from day one. Right. But uh, but when people start start talking left, <laughs> I he, yo it it's smooth. I'm about to yo you catching this? No no time out. About. But the problem with it is when you guys start doing hypocritical stuff. I saw people on Twitter, popular people saying hypocritical things. I'm like, so you guys are cool with what Britt Baker's saying on this show right now, right? Yeah yeah yeah. Go for it. I'm like, that's the same thing Punk just did. This is the exact same thing. What don't people see? Shut the, up. We don't the red, really care. The red, flag, the red flag for me was when I was on your show, by the way, Derek Conrad, Wednesday nights right after Dynamite. Um, I said I said something along the lines of, it, it was a fair statement. I said um, CM Punk needs to be more professional, and so do the others. I think that's what I said. CM Punk needs to be professional, and so do the others. And you ripped me to shreds. I was like, did you not see the second half of what I said? I said, and no, so no, do Sean, the others. Because here's how I read it. Your thing is the headline. CM Punk needs to be better. And so do the others. Like, <laughs> no, two, like we fine. no, they all need to be professional. Tony Khan included. And we won't even get into that because we'll be we'll be here yes, all day yes, arguing yes. about that. That's a whole five <laughs> podcast special we could all do one day. I would love that. We don't have time for it. Um, Britt didn't have the high standard. Listen, I'm going to move on for the sake of this. Keep your Shawn Michaels slander to yourself. Keep your punk slander to yourself. And I'm going to be cool for the rest of this. All right? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And shout out to Casey, too, for saying CM Punk popularized the GTS, because that is for sure true. Um, Woo. Sorry, Kenta. Sorry, Kenta. You'll get that match one day. Anywho, there you we go. have Becky Lynch. Lita and Trish Stratus, who lied about her last match that I paid for in Canada, <laughs> versus Bailey, EO Sky, Dakota Kai, Damage Control. I'm going to come in and say this right now. Damage Control is done. Don't ever bring this up to me. Do not tell me that they are a real group. It is over. You tell me what they've done besides you, you won the tag titles, the paperweights. No, no, I'm done with this. This is a failed experiment. If you're doing a draft, split them up immediately. On Monday, Friday, whatever day it's going to be, all I want to hear is damage control is done. I'm done. I'm over it. That's it. It's through. Or someone gets kicked out, you, you make a new member, you got to do something with this because damage control is hurt by this. Um, I, I would say you would, have to, you would have to use Bailey and kick them to the curb. No, Bailey's the star out of them. That's what I'm saying. Like you split them up, but Bailey is the one who kicks them to the curb. Sean, is there any way to save this? Like, talk me out of this right now, because I want to be talked out of this. No. Tell me, there's a way to save this. No, I'm not going to talk you out of it because it'd be a stretch at this point. I think the ship has sailed. Um, I think, as a matter of fact, I'll take what Derek said a step further. I think damage control is bringing Bailey stock down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, what if had really high hopes at SummerSlam? Don't. Me and Sean started that week, Clash of the Podcast, every Monday, 6.05, Eastern Standard Time. Be there. Um, you can go check the archives for it. We tried, dude. Like, we we were like, yo, we graded everybody Triple H has brought back, and it is sad. And the one of the people who had the highest grades 
We don't even know if he's on the show tonight. Like we don't know what's what's happening with this. The the stock has fallen, and I don't and I mean that respectfully because I don't know. Maybe it's a personal reason, whatever it may be. But the stock has fallen. That is the truth. Yes, sir. Since the time he came back, what is happening with these Triple H picks? We heard rumors tonight. I'm going to tell you all this. Gomez McMahon was in the back. He's got his own dressing room, and he was on headset, and I could tell. Because I heard the words championship said. I heard a lot of Vince-isms tonight where I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Michael Cole wasn't the cool Michael Cole that I like. I was just like, all right, I guess we're here with it. But I did appreciate the two-man announce booth. Thank you for keeping it that way. Um, I I don't know what to say for this. You know what? And to be truthful, I know I got mad at Trish in the beginning. I really just thought I saw Trish's last match. And then once they come out again, you're like, really? Again? Well, Trish but, is corny. Trish is corny to me. 2023 Trish in the last maybe three or four years, these sporadic returns, she's corny in the ring. That little point she does, like, she looks like a freaking goof. I don't know what she's doing. Like, it's very corny to me. Like, I respect her career. She definitely outshined herself as far as, like, being, like, the pretty face. She she showed that she's more than a pretty face. But late, her, her comeback attempts have been lame. We'll say her and Lita are the reason why I think the women's division got advanced past uh uh, just doing you know the like the old bra and panty matches and all that stuff they were the exception like they brought the eyes to the product they could main event shows and i think they changed the game for a lot of people like we're not we're not we're not doing that we're not doing that see we're not gonna take what i just said which is trish is a cornball and go back to 2001 and talk about her contributions to the business i know she's a contributor she's a i just said she's a valid hall of famer her co- but we're not going to gloss over the fact that Trish Stratus is a freaking goofball pointing to the sky when nobody cares. Trish Stratus, did you hear the reaction Trish Stratus got when she came out tonight? Mid. Listen, I can't let you just just talk bad about Trish either, though. Just like Sean and Punk, I'm going to stick up for Trish. There were many a nights when I was a young man that Trish was able to help me out. <laughs> And Trish Stratus is one of the greats when it comes. It's hand sanitizer, people. Relax. You know you get the reference. Though. Trish Stratus, you get the reference, though. Trish Stratus was one of the greats, all right? I love Trish and Lita. Like, I just thought they were great, and I didn't want you to think that we were just dumping on them because I think tonight they did a good job in this performance. This match was better than what it was. What hurts me, though, is how Bailey and her group were, like, jabroned a little bit with this and i I shouldn't say jabron they've been booked jabroni lee like they've just lost way too much for my liking yeah i i i can't first of all eo sky don't like that name you you you, well she can't she probably can't have the old one they want to own the names now i don't care i don't care what you want to do with how you want to doctor it up how you want to write it up i don't care eo sky trash um this, this whole trio is trash. Oh, come on. <laughs> it is. It's trash. What are no. I thought you meant the match, like the trio's match. Go ahead. No, no, continue. No. Continue. No, this trio, this, this trio thing that they got going with these three talented young women. They are they are extremely talented, but you're doing nothing with them. You're you're, you're putting them together to get embarrassed every time. Why? I I really want I want established tag teams. I saw someone say EO and Dakota are gonna Molly Wap Bailey. And I know we're not getting to the match. Listen, uh there was a nice moonsault hit. Bailey hit the manhandle slam off the second rope to Bailey. That's the end. That's the finish of this. I predicted the legends to win, but I didn't want to predict that if that makes sense. You, you know, you ever had those predictions, Sean? You know well, we'll talk about that. I know we're gonna get to that with you, but you know the right prediction, but you're like, I really hope you don't do that though. Oh sure. one hundred percent. I mean, of course, yeah. I I'm living it right now. Yes. <laughs> I, I that's I once I thought about it, I was like, yes. Yeah. Um yeah, damage control or damage goods in Olara. I agree. Uh Trish looks better than than Lita. Yeah, yes. Lita looks like she she had some shiners. Did she wrestle recently? She had maybe to. she was on SmackDown. I missed SmackDown this week, so I don't know if she wrestled. But Lita looked like she had she got dotted really she bad by both of her eyes, like she yeah. had bruising around them. Yeah. This though, under the right eye was that was horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Sean Hatred. <laughs> Just kidding. I totally agree with him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I think I think people are gonna feel one way or another way about Trish. Um, 
Yeah, Trish helped out a lot of young men in the 2000s. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just put it like this. I'll just put it like this. And, and gentlemen, you could agree or disagree. Some people should come back and some people shouldn't. Yes. I, I, I agree with that. Some some people should have that 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 gateway to come back, but some people should have that gateway closed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it depends on the name. Depends on the name and what we're doing. But that was the match. Do you guys have anything else you want to add to this before we move on? Because I'm ready. Yeah, damage control's dead, and so is this conversation. Let's move on. Yeah. Perfectly summed up. Next up, it is father versus son. This is the story straight out of any classic movie or story you want to hear. Oh, baby. My family is the most important thing to me. I'm going to go get some ice for my left knee. Ray Mysterio is out in these streets. He finally stood up to his son. He is a hero to fathers around the world who get tired of taking this mess. Um, this was amazing. I love the entrances for this. This match, this feud has been one of my favorite ones. Not in total buildup, but in WrestleMania like time frame buildup. I have loved this. Yeah, th this was actually really good. But you, you know, you know what should have been what should have been played. When, when he took that belt off. Yo, you got to chill with that. You got to chill with that Scarface stuff right now. No, not even that. The, uh, are you giving me a lip, boy? <laughs> Leave family guy reference for those who don't know. So in this match, Dominic comes out. I heard the sirens. Um, they He comes out with, like, shackles on. Like, this dude's really been to prison. I keep telling y'all, if he really went to jail for that, he would have been in holding. He would have been eating a McDonald's steak, egg, and cheese bagel because that's what they brought him that morning. This dude would have not been in trouble. That's what makes this even more hilarious. He's walking around the teardrop. <laughs> you were in holding probably, bro. Cut it out. 48 to 72 hours. I love it. He was I love what he's doing right now. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Someone said Dom the, Dom the Con. <laughs> Someone said welcome to EPW After Dark. <laughs> yeah, we're tripping tonight, but I love it. I love it. This is a good episode. <laughs> BJ, that's exactly what I was thinking. Holla, if you hear me. <laughs> so afterwards, though, I loved Ray's entrance, dude, for this. He came out. They had nothing but a G thing. And I was like, yeah. WWE really wants to be the Super Bowl so bad. Dude. Really we got some good music. Look at this, y'all. This was cool. So Snoop drives him out. They got the low rider. They're, they're doing all their thing. They hit the Eddie Guerrero music. You knew people were going to pop for that. I just thought of Eddie and I had memories instantly. Oh, so good, dude. You know what I was thinking? <laughs> Dom's real dead. Any girl, any girl on top. My God, what a frog splash. <laughs> Derek, why do you, Derek randomly knows this Jim Ross line when Eddie Guerrero debuted. I don't know why, but he loves it. Dude, it was it was when, um, when the Radicals came in. They were sitting in the crowd, and uh, it was a tag team match with um, the New Age Outlaws. New Age Outlaws, and I think it was uh, Al Snow and someone else. Yes, sir. Al oh, Snow and Steve Black. Yes. yes, yes. I don't know if Rob is joking about this, but if that was in that video package, I did not notice that. What? Uh, I will not repeat that because I think I can get in trouble for it, but you guys can kind of read it. And he said, really? the uh, internet is uh, uh, I'm not going to read it out loud. Ooh, yeah, that's bad. Oh. That's bad. I did not know that. Uh, e said, had a tear when Eddie's music hit. Yeah, man, Eddie is the man. Uh, yeah, oh, e, e remembers it. And then he busted his arm right after. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he hey, busted geez. his arm the following, the following SmackDown. Yep, yep. Yeah, that, I'll never Eesh. forget that. The, ugh, yeah, I'm holding my arm just thinking about it. Oh. Dude, they get in the ring. Ray Mysterio was dressed like the Flash too. That's the that's who I thought it was, right? I, I think it was yeah. the Flash, and then I think uh, Sun God. I think it, I could be wrong, but I, it, I think it was the Flash outfit. But on the back of his jacket, it looked like there was a Sun a Sun God on the back of his jacket. I could be wrong though. Uh, I'm just gonna say no lie, Casey. No lie, but I'm not gonna address it again. I, I referenced it earlier in the very very beginning. The um, Dominic and Ray Mysterio. Great, great stuff here. This was Dominic's time to shine. I thought he was good. I think he's going to be someone they're going to try to build around as long mm -hmm. as he keeps his head on his shoulders. I think he'll be great. At one point in this match, bro, 
Rey Mysterio took off his belt and beat his kid, and they put this on Instagram on WWE like Father of the Year, guys. <laughs> Father of the Year beats his son right on there. Michael Cole was clapping like, "Yes, beat that kid, beat him." And then his he goes outside to his mom. His mom's like, "You deserve it. You deserve it." <laughs> and he does one of the best things oh. ever, ever when he goes outside. Throws a drink right on his sister. <laughs> well, she, he, is, the Mysterios should be ashamed of themselves. Okay. Yeah. Not that family, even. That family. Dominic's, Dominic's accuracy needs to be commended on this drink throw. <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw this, but his sister's mouth was like. <gasps> Before he do it, and it landed part of the water, or whatever the drink was in her mouth. I was like, Dominic has probably been waiting to do something like that for years. He's like, Gotcha, gotcha that time. So I know there was a laughter after that. Ray goes to stop. And that's how Dominic is the advantage in this. Um, listen, he deserved uh, it. Judgment Day comes out. Damian Priest is out there. He takes off his jacket, puts it down. Remember that that's going to come back up. They they're trying to interfere, and then Sean. The newly appointed LWO comes running out. Uh, Santos Escobar and his crew are out there to put a beat down on Judgment Day. I loved it. Do you like this LWO's back? By the way, we have a shirt, uh, T Public EPW. Go check it out. Listen, I would never um, say anything good about if they brought back the NWO in 2023, if they brought back DX in 2023. I like the LWO throwback because. It gives that squad more relevance. You have to understand, you know, that that team that's joined forces with Ray, they really didn't have much purpose. You know, they they have they've kind of been you know wallowing in mediocrity the last few months. Now all of a sudden they're saving Ray at WrestleMania and wearing LWO t shirts. I think they work that LWO thing very nicely, and I think they should hold on to it. I think they should rock with that oh, for you. So apparently on the run sheet, it's that's what they're listed as now. Nice. It didn't. It didn't say Legato Del Fantasma. It said LWO. So that might be what they're running with here for a little bit. Yeah. And, sometimes uh, nostalgia. Up, yeah. Sometimes nostalgia works. Like I said, if they brought back NWO 2023, I'd be like, "What are you doing?" But the LWO, even though it's 20 years ago, in this particular moment, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Chat, put one up for NWO 2000 if you want to see him return. Oh, no. Jeez. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett with that NWO guitar, he'll be right back out. <laughs> um, so let's get let's get to it. So they eventually all get kicked out. LWO battles them up the ramp. Dom hits a 619, goes for a frog splash. Dom then exposes the turnbuckle. The ref sees it, and you know all referees. Sounds like a good idea what you thought you were about to do. Let me put this whole turnbuckle pad together. Now, how do you rope this through? So he's over there messing with this thing. And then he goes into the jacket, the jacket I told you to remember. He wraps a chain around his hand that he found in there. But Ray's like, nah, 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 not today. Ray lands him on the ropes, 619, frog splash. Ray gets the win because Bad Bunny, how Bad Bunny going to stop this and interfere in this family mess? Something's about to happen with this. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Ray got the win because of Bad Bunny. Now, WrestleMania, is it back to WrestleMania Backlash? Yo, who do I need to talk to to get you guys to stop naming stuff, extra stuff? You don't need to do this. No, I, 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 think, they, I think they just left it as Backlash. Nah, I, I definitely heard WrestleMania Backlash. Chat, tell me what you heard. Tell me what you heard. You're both Somebody right. You're both right, by the way. You're both right. It's backlash, and Michael Cole mistakenly called it WrestleMania backlash. Okay. Thank goodness, because I definitely heard him say that. Bad Bunny, Rey Mysterio, uh, and whomever from the uh, LWO against Dom, Finn, Priest. Yo, this is going to be a banger. Banger. No, I do... See here, you see, he oh he heard more than six names. He was like, "No, nah, I don't know about that." Already, have faith, bro. Have faith. I'm just saying, bro. That that that's that's a lot of chaos, bro. Okay, everyone's saying it's just backlash. Michael Cole did botch. Then Sean is correct because I heard him say that, and I was like, "They better not change that." Well, he botched a couple times. Yeah, yeah, he was getting a little tired tonight. But well, he deserved to botch because he was being so freaking petty, or whoever told him to say what he said was being petty at the beginning of the show. Corey Graves, congratulations on being the guy who's 
uh, broadcasted the most WrestleManias in history. You're the longest tenured WrestleMania announcer. Did you have to say that? Are you really throwing jabs at Jim Ross? Get get a life. I concur. I concur. I did not even hear that because that that's what he said at the beginning of the show. Corey Graves said that to Cole at the beginning of the show. Cole, Cole doesn't deserve it though. So exactly. Moving oh, on, we've been saying that probably since ninety nine. I'm not. Gonna Michael Cole you. is mid. Period. Oh, my, Michael Cole at one point tonight definitely had me say out loud in front of a bunch of people, "I miss when this dude used to get wedgies from DX in ninety seven. <laughs> so that was the end of it with him. Let's move into the match that uh, had Royal Rumble implications behind it. Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Now, I'm here to let y'all know. Derek was actually giving Charlotte compliments during this match. Derek's going to sit up here in front, but I had to say this before he could even speak because I do things like this. So say I want to hold you. So, say it ain't so. He had, he, he had, you had to give some props to Charlotte in this one, I feel. I did. I did. Uh, there, there, there were, there were th- about three spots. Oh, here we go. About three spots that I actually appreciated. <laughs> but that's it. That's it. I, I'm not a Charlotte Flair fan at all. Until, By the way, until that mustache is cut, it is Gomez McMahon in this chat from now on. <laughs> that's the only way we will refer to this man. All right, I'm moving on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let me stop. Um, this match was really good. And, Sean, I, I think this might be the first time that – they did the right thing, bro. Yes. They did. This match was brutal, hard hitting. Um, Listen, I'm not even going to get too deep into this. I'm not even going through the moves. I just want us to talk about this because I thought this was a really good match. Sean, I saw Twitter arguing over this. A couple of my friends, actually. Is this the greatest women's WrestleMania match thus far to you? I want everyone to take a second and just think. Chat, same question. Is this the greatest women's WrestleMania match thus far? That was a debate. And I saw some people going back and forth, and I was very interested in it. It's very easy, gentlemen, to be a prisoner of the moment. Um, you, You have to take a breath, and you have to think, and you have to, when I say you, I'm talking about the general public, has to think and reminisce before we make a rash decision. Tonight's match was excellent, but if I take a moment and think in retrospect, I cannot give it the nod over Banks versus Bel Air two years ago. I just can't. I said the same thing. I can't. It's on um, Twitter for the record. Yeah, so that's why I'm at with it. It was tremendous. They did a great job. I just cannot give it the nod over Banks versus Bel Air from 37. I don't even know if I'm ready to do number two yet. Like, I want to let it sink in. I'm like you. I have to let this sink in first before I start talking because I'll start talking crazy real quick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just know, but this is one of those ones where I'm like, let me let it sink in first. What do you think, Derek? Um, I'm going to have to say that this was the best performance I've seen from Charlotte. That's that's saying something, folks. Just so you know, if you haven't watched Derek talk about WWE in a minute, that's saying something. Like this, this was her best performance. Now, everybody knows I am not a Charlotte uh, fan by any scale. I'm not taking anything away from her. I just don't like the fact of how she is put on a pedestal. That's beyond me. I don't understand it. I don't care to understand it. She's just not my cup of tea. But that being said, this by far is her best performance for me. And this is by far Rhea's best for performance. And I'm a Rhea Ripley fan. But these two together tonight, this was the, the, the best performance I've, I've seen. But I don't know if I can say that this was the best women's performance or wrestling match at WrestleMania. That's hard for me to say. It, it, it is something different. It is something different when it comes to that. And uh, I see Deanna said she loved this match. I, I can't wait to hear what you guys are saying in the chat. But this is what I was talking about when me and Sean were uh, doing the preview and predictions on Clash of the Podcast, 605 every Monday. Yes, um, 
you can you can get into this, but we talked about horrible builds, but we knew some matches would be great despite uh, horrible. So true. So true. So true. And this fell right into it. The build was not right because Charlotte feels like a heel. Even when she is rattled, she goes right to heel mode. Uh, similar to many others. When they get rattled, they, they turn into a heel. And that's just the natural state with some people. Like, yeah, you, you belong as a heel. I get it. And I thought that the roles should have been reversed here, but you couldn't reverse the roles because of storylines Judgment Day was wrapped up in, if that all makes sense. Like, yeah, I'm doing this and then coming back. You can't do that stuff. But here, Charlotte deserves her props. And we're the, listen, all three of us, I know how we all feel about her. And I think we feel the same way as most of the wrestling community. I can't, I can't stand her, but I'm going to give her flowers for tonight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she cool. deserves it. Um, he says she couldn't cash in that Charlotte in the bank. There's still time now. There's still time to do that. Give it, give it a week. Uh, Sasha versus Bianca. Someone said tight with Sasha versus Bianca. I'm not mad at that. Uh, can't be the greatest without Bertha Faye. E. Why? <laughs> no, I think Sasha versus Bianca was uh, best second by the Triple H, or excuse me, I said Triple H, Triple Threat with Becky, Sasha, and Charlotte, and then third, uh, Bianca versus Becky. I'd say it's the fourth best match. Mm. Uh, Omar says it was a good match. Charlotte belongs in that pedestal. Athletically, charisma, talking, she's the total package. That said, Bianca and Sasha is number one. Yeah, who is that? Casey? Casey? Yeah, but, but Casey oh. said that he didn't think that was the best, though. He said it's Bianca and uh, Sasha. Casey, you, you know, I, boy, she don't need a pedestal. My biggest, my biggest issue with Charlotte, real quick, is that I think Charlotte has earned, at least in the last three or four years, some creative license. Um, and when I say that, I mean just the opportunity to be able to sit down and say, hey, listen, I don't feel comfortable with this in a good way. Meaning, you know what? Let's bring you back and have you win the title your first night on SmackDown. Or let's let you main event WrestleMania for the 437th time. I think it's Charlotte resp Charlotte's responsibility, which I think she's failed at doing to say, hey, listen, for the betterment of my character, for the betterment of my career, somebody else should get that spot. I want I don't want to ever give up a chance to be on WrestleMania. But you know what? Maybe me winning the title this year, maybe me being added to the triple uh, making it a triple threat between Becky, Rhonda, and myself is not the best idea. And take a stand and, and do what's best for business so you don't get booed out of the building for no reason. I get doing it on the big shows where you want to be in those matches, but if you did it throughout the year, similar to how Rock, uh, I'm trying to think of who else, Triple H, Mankind, how those guys would work with other people, and maybe maybe on a Raw they'll get beat by like Taka or Hurricane or whomever something it may be. Right. They, they would do something that it would be like, oh, okay, they're letting some other guy get some some stuff out of this. Then you're endeared to the people who are like, oh, they care. You know what I mean? But I, I don't think Casey's wrong about the pedestal thing. Casey says she belongs on the pedestal. Casey's not saying get, give her that pedestal because he. I think he gets the gripe. We've talked about it, so I know. I, I know how he feels. I think they gave her the pedestal though. She's on it, but what you're the, it's the propping up what they do with her. Her being there, I get it though. What he said is not wrong. Athletically, charisma. She's got the total package. The problem is, it's just it when feels it feels like you're doing that though. Let me, let, me give you guys, let me give you a quick example of what I think what I what I think has happened. I have no proof of this whatsoever. I believe John Cena was approached with a 17 title ring, and John Cena said no. I I just believe that in my heart. I could be very wrong. Maybe it was never talked about. Maybe it was never approached. Maybe it was never even thought about. Right? But I believe John Cena at some point was approached with a 17 title ring. He said, "You know what?" <laughs> For my legacy and for the fact that I'm going to get booed out of every building I ever stepped foot in for the rest of my life, I'm going to pass. And I think Charlotte should take that same perspective. Understood. Fair. Rhea, this was her moment tonight. And I love that she got to hit the uh, the big move. She let her know in her face. She said, this is my time and hit that riptide off the top. It was beautiful. Charlotte even had the kind of like the smile nod, like she knew she did good for that moment because they made up for that WrestleMania 36 moment where I thought that was really, really like absurd. 36 so that, that's just how I feel. 36 was a dud overall. We know that. Yeah, well, it was in a tough spot, too. I don't envy anybody who had to go out there and work that during that sad time period. Uh, Theory had an interview after here. I, I didn't feel anything from it. It's barely not worth it to mention it, but I'm just going to because that was the next order. It's a crossover. Nothing, Sean? Felt nothing from it? So-so. Nah. 
So so it, it didn't make up for what Cena said. Like I said, that Cena promo really hurt things. If you were just bringing him in to do that match, Cena should have just said nothing then throughout this. Like, I don't know. I just did not like what Cena said. And now it's just haunting. It's raining in my head and it probably shouldn't. But hopefully Theory can turn that around. We get Miz and Snoop out there. They come out and announce the attendance. We'll wait and see what the real attendance is after this. I'm sure someone's going to look it up and do their due diligence on this over the time. Um, this sets up a match and Pat McAfee comes out. Oh. How'd you feel, Sean? Were you impressed? Were you like, cool? Uh, I like Pat McAfee, but this was, this was poorly done. It, it was, it was unnecessary. It was, it left a lot to be desired. I don't know if anyone else felt like it made the match card go longer, but, um, it did. Well, it definitely it did. did. It took 10 to 12 minutes away from, from the main event. Mm. You could have had that extra 12 to 10 minutes to, or 10 to 12 minutes to, to do Something outrageous. The match, the match was already great to begin with, but you could have done way more. That could have been was, really nice. well, sometimes more, more doesn't help a match, too. Sometimes that could make it worse. Yeah. But they, I don't know. They went with this. I think they wanted to have a surprise here. They felt like they needed a surprise. You know WWE lately, right? Like they yeah, always well, feel like we LA, a LA Knight or Bobby Lashley would have been the right way to go. Yes. I think that's gonna be the surprise tomorrow. Oh, okay. Truthfully. I can see that happening. Um, when are we getting Graves versus Pat? Yeah, Graves did roll his eyes when his music hit the fan over to him. I was like, is this an angle or what are we doing here? Or is this is there some real heat here? But um, Miz and Pat Mack, if we end up having a match with each other, Snoop makes the match. I guess Snoop can just do that because, well, he's the dog father, so it makes sense. Um, this leads to Miz going to the floor. He pushes the San Francisco 49ers player, uh, Mr. George Kittles. Uh, Mr. Kittles uh, goes out there and he's doing his thing. And well, while we're looking at all of this, I really wanted him to reference Pentagon. That's his real favorite wrestler. I wanted him to go up, hit the hit the the move. Metal, metal. I wish he would have had the Penta mask on something because we know that's who his real favorite wrestler is. And I was just like, ah, so bummed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> McAfee need an extra cash. He's getting sued by Fire. Brett Fire, man, let me not even speak on it before we're next on, the, on his hit list. He's trying to find anything to get out of his trouble. He really, he really uh, is. I don't think he'd go, he'd go far with us, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the po them pockets ain't deep either. <laughs> let me not front. Um, yeah, this was this was all right, though. Pat McAfee hits a big dive. He hits a punt kick. He wins. This is what it was, right? Yeah. Uh, Ho-hum. I'm going to leave that right where it is and move on here to the main event. I like McAfee, to be honest. No, Pat McAfee's fine. I don't have an issue with Pat McAfee. I just want them to build this stuff up and do something meaningful with it versus, like, and, it was just kind of like. And, know, by, and by comparison, his match last year was awesome. It was, yeah, it was. Who did he? Was it Vince last year? Austin Theory and Vince. Yeah, yeah, that was weird how they set that up, though. I, I hated the after of it. Like, him and Theory was fine when it was, like, yeah, well, and, that, and, that, and, that goes down as, and that goes down as a mania victory for Vince. That was pathetic. But, no, I'm talking about him versus Austin was awesome. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that, that was good. I actually like that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, since they're going with the Logan Paul Bad Bunny route, give me uh, McAfee, Bronk, Kittle, and Grayson Waller as the ultimate frat douche boy heel staple. <laughs> could do that. You could do that. I could like see that. Lita was humming. What? <laughs> Y'all boys tripping in the chat. Let's get to the main event. It was for, they made the right call here, I think. They went with the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championship match. It was the Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. This was the right move. I was hurt. I was hurt. I was hurt. I don't want to even get into all of the breakdown of the moves. We we gotta let we gotta let we gotta let Hubs rock with this one, bro. Hold I, on, no, no, no. let me just tell him, I, my disappointment. No, 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 my disappointment yeah. small. Then we can let Sean talk. Yeah. I really wanted them to do that brain buster on the top <laughs> rope for much. I know the Usos could do this. They're more than capable of doing this move. It probably doesn't even hurt. I don't know what's the risk that they're so scared that maybe someone will fall off to the side. He's pile driver. Vince wasn't gonna allow this. 
But come on, <laughs> I just want a little Kevin Steen El Generico love there. But that's it. That's where I digress. I thought this match told a great story and everybody was into it. Like the kickouts were great. The moves were great. The storytelling was great. Uh, the three big boots, the Huluva kicks. Yes. Loved it. I was before you go. I want to say the way Sami Zayn got in that ring was A plus steak sauce. That was nice. The look on that man's face, oh, oh, you got something coming, bro. <laughs> got something coming, Oos. <laughs> All right, Sean. The floor is yours. I'm by God devastated. <laughs> Was uh, it the little Uzi Vert performance? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't I didn't like that. that yeah, was, I mean that was unnecessary, but it didn't bother me. Um you know the Usos. <laughs> The Usos are, are the greatest tag champs of all time, arguably. Definitely the longest reigning. Um, we all know how I feel about the ball that I feel like they dropped with Jey Uso. Some people still say that option is still there. I, th- I think the heat and all the th- all the momentum um, that was there, it will not be duplicated if they try and go back to that. I think the best option would have to con- continue the course that we saw starting at Royal Rumble um, and, and going with it, but they decided not to. Ever since, <clears throat> ever since uh, Sammy got turned on by Jay on Raw, we knew that this day would come. The writing was on the wall. I don't think anybody in their right mind would pick the Uso to have won this match, including myself. I picked I picked Sammy and Kato win too. <sighs> the Usos are, are transcendent talents in the tag team division, with main event, no pun intended singles capabilities. Yes, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn winning this match was the right thing to do. After they after they made the decision to have Jake turn on Sami, it was the only thing to do. But where does that leave the Usos now? What are the Usos if they're not WWE World Tag Team Champions? That's how synonymous they become with those titles. I, and it's not just about it's not just about okay well you can't be champions forever before anybody says that duh I'm not saying you should be champions forever what I'm saying is the Usos identify with being champions because the Usos have earned the right to be that good enough to say I can't imagine the Usos without tag team championship belts so now that they're no longer champions and now that they in my opinion dropped the ball on making Jake main event Uso a main event guy, which I think they had right in the palm of their hands, and they actively decided to throw it away, where do we go from here? That's my problem. So I'm very sad. Though it was a great match, and though the right guys won, I'm very, very disappointed with where we are now as of 12, whatever it is, one, whatever it is, on Sunday morning, and the Usos no longer being unified tag team champions. It's going to be something else to see what they end up doing here. I feel like they can't break the bloodline up yet either at this point. I feel like they need each other, if that makes any sense. Like, it wouldn't feel right if they just got rid of this group and just told everyone, go your separate ways or do whatever. Even though there is a rumor of a draft coming up. I don't know how true that is. I don't know when that's supposed to be. But are we going to ununify the belts? Are we going to put Raw and SmackDown tag titles again? I hope we don't do that. I think it's time to get your tag division right and getting some serious, credible teams in there besides New Day and the Usos. You got to work on this. And you got Sammy and KO. They're going to work for a while. But how long before you're going to want them back in singles roles? Food for thought. I'm not saying that it's anything horrible, but... I'm going to go to uh, the chat here real quick. Uh, everybody, get your scores ready for, for night one. We'll, we'll try to give it a grade. We did not talk about this before once again, me and Derek, so we're probably going to be uh, debating here for a second with our feelings on this. Emotional, brutal, incredible match. Right guys won, but FTR would have formatted it better uh, a whole lot, a lot of the too much. Uh, I love the this match and the story. No Roman, no solo adds to the story. They, they were, I was like, not even Paul Heyman showed up for him, you know? Is that is that part of it? That's ooh. Man, I wanted that uh that that pile driver brain buster combo. Man, who are you telling? Bro? Who are you telling? Yeah, I wanted to see that turnbuckle DDT. 
See, I felt the same way. Okay, my only complaint, Six says, is that little Uzi, uh, Uzi's performance isn't WrestleMania in Philly. That yo, we all said the same thing. I was like, is it? He's this is a Philly song. Like, why wouldn't he come out and do that song in Philly? But maybe I don't know. Maybe he felt like they had to do it here. The pop would have been crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, Vince is in in total control when a tag match main events WrestleMania. Uh, can't wait for the tongue lashing Roman will give the Usos tomorrow. Uh, I came in late, had to watch the last few matches later. After eating that Chinese food, my stomach just wanted to rock. Woo! It's all right, man. Hope you feel better. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, they the Usos, bro. Arguably one of the greatest wrestling tag teams in the world. They'll be all right. I'm sure they'll find something for them to do. I think they'll be fine too. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. Let's see. By the way, on the press conference, KO and Sammy pay respect not only to just PWG Super Dragon for helping them, but they thank Mark and Jay Briscoe. Yeah, I saw Sammy was really torn up by uh, Jay Briscoe's passing. Uh, I predict a rematch for the belts, though. I wouldn't mind seeing the Usos and KO and Sammy running back. Would you be all right with that, Sean? I feel like we're going to get a, a, a trios match with Code. Yo, look at the hatred. Just I mentioned it. It's going to be a trios. Cody, Sammy. Kevin, listen, it's either happening on Raw or at that Backlash show. I'm telling you. It's going to be oh, Cody. Yeah. I don't care who wins or what happens at this point. It's going to be Cody, Sammy, KO versus the Bloodline. It's going to be sloppy. Here we go. You it's can't. Sloppy, no pleases some. <laughs> bro, We you already know my stance on the Usos. I like the Usos, but they can be sloppy. They can be sloppy, bro. I'm, I'm in no position hence, to judge. Hence, hence the, the double... Splash. What happened with your boy? What happened? He was trying to make sure he hit his nah, face. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah. You, can't, you can't be in the main you event mean, crushing people's you mean, faces. You mean to tell Mabel, me? Mabel, you can't just go around doing that, all right? Huh. You, mean, you mean to tell me you can't you can't direct your body? You've been doing the splash for how long? You well, can't I, say, I'm, let me I'm go with, a little low. I'm with you. What I would say, though, Derek, I would say if you can't execute it perfectly, don't do it. That's what I'm saying. Man, he was trying to make sure his brother and Kevin Owens were safe. You ain't trying to knock knees or heads or something. You got to be careful. That's it ain't nothing wrong with being careful, bro. But it, listen, you you can you can direct yourself a little lower where you're like, all right, cool. He's got enough space. We, everybody's safe. Yada, yada, yada. Boom. There you go. Jeff, the, the, Hard, the Hardy boys never had a problem. Exactly. Oh, wait a minute. I saw Casey say I suggested trios. I actually have a way you could make that Judgment Day one four on four oh, with Rhea. Oh, yeah, oh, you could do a Rhea and Zelina. No. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just no, saying. no, no, we're not doing that, bro. We trios is too much. That's outrageous. You could make it ten out no. of ten. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. Matt Lopez says WrestleMania was eight out of ten. EPW and Hubbard ten out of ten. Thank you, brother. Thank you very I'm much. I'm just saying, without the bloodline and Roman protecting them, they would have been uh, punished for that crap. Uh, let's see here. Every match tonight had the perfect ending. Uh, Naslim, thank you so much for joining us, man. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, uh, leave us a comment after. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for coming in here. Um, Jesus said, Conrad and Derek, do them raw NXT SmackDown reviews now that Vince is back. Need Derek rent back. Nah, 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 Jesus. <laughs> you, you're cut. The moment you told me last year to do that WrestleMania after WrestleMania Raw review and you didn't show up and that joint was buns, done. <laughs> done, bro. Main event, uh, Jay was mentioned in the commentary. That is true, Gomar. That is true. Deanna said no, no, no. Uh, the minute you said trios, Derek, what the hell no? Nah. <laughs> Watch Ray and Bad Bunny go for the tag titles. Come on now, Jesus. Come on. See, you suggested a trio match every single storyline. You would call it backlash trios. We could. No. Nah, do that. I ain't watching that. Uh, the backlash main event should be KO, Sammy, C versus Roman and the Usos. Hot take. Naslim says, he says, a hot take prediction. Randy returns and costs Cody the belts. Whoa, you getting into some legacy stuff there. Cody hasn't struggled enough yet. Cody has to overcome his past, which is Randy. Maybe maybe they go that route. Sean, you believe I, that? I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I like it. I don't know if Randy's ready yet, though. Oh, yeah. Is he back from a surgery? Uh, I don't want to reference him, but according to Uncle Dave, Dave Meltzer, uh, Randy should be out longer, but who knows? 
who knows at this point. I just want Randy to come back 100% if he's going to come back. Yeah, Derek, keep that hate going, my guy. I respect consistency. <laughs> 7 out of 10, he said tonight. Uh, I'd watch the whole show of Trios if the story called for it. That's right. Trios tournament. Let Derek watch some Chikara. Oh, Chikara. God. No. Jeez. No, bro. They brought back 123 Kid. Actually, I think he wrestled uh, Sami Zayn on that show. Dude, 123 Kid was amazing in this tournament. I didn't even know. I was like, Sean Waltman shaved his beard and he came out doing all the old 123 Kids. By the way, great. by the way, Trios tag titles in AEW, unnecessary, pointless. I. I'm one of the people who wanted it. I don't think I can really defend it fully right now either. So I'm going to be quiet and move on. See, see what I see what I have nothing to say. I can't really, I can't really defend it. See, I'm <laughs> unprofessional. No, yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so Deanna said, I don't think Cody's ready. I've been seeing that come up a lot. That Cody's not ready. He's, He's not. Bad. He's not. He just got bad. He's like, not. I don't understand why this is even happening. This is uh, Roman. Roman Reigns should win tomorrow. I'm saying it. Hold on. I'm hold. I'm holding this real quick. I'm gonna hold this question for sick. Final scores for this show. What What are we giving WrestleMania Night One? Seven. You're going seven out of ten. L- letter grade. That's what I got at the oh. bottom. We got to use the grade scale for EPW. At least you do, D. C plus. Really? Yeah. Sean, what are you saying? I'm gonna go slightly, and I mean slightly above that, and say B minus. I was going to go B minus two for tonight. C plus. All right. So we're going to take the average of what me and Sean said that outweighs yours. We're going to B minus <laughs> for tonight's show. Sure. We're, we're going to take a group consensus here. <laughs> Derek trying to grade on a curve, and we're not letting that professor <laughs> shit happen. So six says, does Jay White show up in AEW or WWE? He should show up in AEW because if he shows up in WWE, his career is going to be ruined. Well, see, I feel like AEW is too crowded, though. You got you got juice. You got a lot of people there that you're not getting enough screen time for now. So he's him going there. He's going to be battling for screen time. Well, so and he, he doesn't want to be on Ring of Honor. If he goes to WWE, he will battle. He'll be battling on Velocity. <laughs> Here he goes. Here he goes. Somebody make the shirt. Get the presses. <laughs> Yo, I don't. So, so, so if Jay White goes to WWE. What would be the purpose? Like, what what would he show up for? Let me tell you. WWE has no buddy. This is what Sean's argument was. And this is why I listened to Sean. When he was talking about main event Jay Uso, there were people cheering. So it's on a platter for you. The food is made. It is sitting there for you. And you're not taking it because you want to make the star. You want to control who's doing it. I get that, WWE. But when you're starving for stars, that you're begging someone like Cody Rhodes to come back, you know they beg. You know, Cody was like, oh, I'm sitting here on Ellis Island in AEW. I'm living great. And I'm being a smart behind because I know exactly that Cody was saying that stuff in AEW. But then he went and did this. And I know, don't talk bad about Cody. I get it, dude. But it's still, Cody saw the money. They fired all those wrestlers. They removed them, whatever you want to call it, uh, released them. The bag was there. Millions is sitting right there. They, You know why they did that? So they could get anybody they wanted from AEW or anywhere else when they wanted them. The money is there if that's what Jay White wants. The opportunity is being told to him that it's there. The only fear is if Vince McMahon sees him and doesn't like him, and then he's like, you know what? It's time to make Skinner. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, that's the fear. Are you going to get stuck in a bad gimmick? Are you going to make this dude something that he's not? That's the fear. Cody Rhodes is a see-through opportunist piece of crap. I do not respect him at all because he went back on everything that he said he stood for. He said AEW was his life because AEW represented change. AEW represented everything I walked away from. AEW represented the fact that I was being mistreated where I was, and I have come to AEW. I have created help to create AEW because I want to change this industry. And then you go back with your tail tucked between your legs like a coward. I am disgusted with Cody Rhodes. And I hope, even though I predict that he will win, I hope to the heavens. You can look at that on there. I, I hope, want you to. I hope to the heavens 
Wow. I hope to the heavens. <laughs> I hope that he loses. Cody Rhodes is a bold face liar. Listen, I, I lost I lost respect for Cody simply off of his, off of his theme song. Uh, let me stop. Let's stop. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> let me let me tell you what I just said, Sean. Just for the record, somebody made this on Twitter, and I had to grab this before it got taken down. It was about Cody Rhodes. He did an interview with someone, and someone was like, "Didn't you say something different before that?" And people are now finally, Sean. Do you hear me? Like you said in that about Yokozuna and Brett in the song. Do you hear me? I'm telling you, Cody Rhodes said on AW Unrestricted, I want to be an EVP until I die. Then Cody books himself to never challenge for the title again. And it's somebody on a bike, right, with a stick. And then he puts the stick in the front tire. Then it says, Cody, I wanted to be a wrestler and not a coach. What are you doing, bro? What are you saying? What are you saying right now? You you set this all up. You guys remember they built the infrastructure of the company. That's all I ever hear. Yeah. I don't get it. Uh, I suggest Randy get a big title feud for Cody as Hill Randy. King of Trios, one, two, three, kid and Sammy was nuts. Yeah, it's definitely a match worth checking out if you guys never saw that. Truthfully, I'm not. I'm gonna disagree for the AW Trios now that ROH six man. <laughs> Cody has a struggle enough. Just put up a pick of Stardust. That is true as well. CM Punk fights harder against people like Meltzer, Jericho than he did any of his MMA fights. Woo, spicy, spicy take. It's a B for me tonight. No, Conrad, he needs to be in AEW. They need another top heel. Too much, too many baby faces. Uh, Jay White goes to WWE to be our main eventing on Shotgun Saturday night. Give me Jay White and Adam Cole feud over Jay White versus Madcap Moss. Hate and somebody said Cody came back because he saw money and opportunity. He will be back on AEW when all is said and done. I do think he'll be back in AEW. Okay, so so he sold out. I agree. He sold out. I agree. He sold out his. Uh, I'm not gonna accept it. Yeah. Not, not says uh, Wardlow, Darby Allen, and Jay Cargill need to make the jump to WWE. I do not see that happening. Uh, somebody said, "Whoa, <laughs> uh, let's see here." Cody Steam is a banger. Jay White is not fired. Jay, the, the opinion on Jay White can vary. I don't think Cody should win. It's not his time. It's about the universal belt. He said he wanted the heavyweight title. I mean, he can have them all. All for one. If not Cody to beat Roman, then who? That That's the only, that's the only uh, epidemic that you have right now. Do I need to answer that question, Conrad? No, we, we know what your answer is. You Derek, had you it. Know too. Derek, you know too. And it's not, it's not crazy. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I'm thinking, and it's not crazy. I don't know why I'm the only one who sees this. It's not. You're not wrong. It's not yeah. crazy at all. Listen, folks, we're going to be back for WrestleMania night two as we wrap this up. I'm going to run down the card real quick for you. So for night two, we are going to get Bianca Belair versus Asuka. I think this is another women's match that could deliver big time, even though the story has been kind of Man. Uh, we have the IC championship match, triple threat, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Uh, lots of rumors swirling around Drew McIntyre's contractual status. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Edge versus Finn Balor in a hell in a cell match. We have the old cell back, so that should uh, be yeah. glorious. Should be interesting what they do there. <sighs> The match that was my sleeper pick of the night, well, we have one for the women's division. Let's see if they can impress and do the same thing. I'm holding out hope here. Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez versus uh, Nyla and Shotzi versus Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green and Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. That is too many people. Brock Lesnar versus Omas in the main event. Aquaman versus Homelander. Roman <laughs> Reigns versus <laughs> Cody Rhodes. It's going to be a banger. And we're going to be back here again, setting it all up. So let us know. Be back. Check in with EPW. We want to hear from you guys after the show once again. We'll be on talking. it, And then on Monday, Clash of the Podcast, you're going to get more fallout with uh, me and Sean talking about all of this. And I'm sure we'll be getting into uh, the draft and some other topics as well. Sean, if you got anything that you want to uh, throw in here before we sign out, Jay Uso should have turned on the bloodline. I'm done. 
That is Sean Stance. You show him some love. He we, we brought up many good points tonight. And, 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 no, and, 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 thank you guys so much for having me. Again, thank you guys. I'm so humbled and appreciative. Um, thank you for uh, coming um, on. You, know, you guys have a really great show, and I appreciate you including me on this. Thank you. No, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Don't slander the names of CM Punk and Shawn Michaels in front of you. <laughs> All right. There's some other ones, too, that'll grind my gears, but I have to find them. I have to find the nerves that they touch. You remember glorious moments like when Batista turned on Rey Mysterio? And I laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> and we have good stuff here. You don't tell Derek about trios matches, apparently. There are things that just grind our gears. But we are all still wrestling fans, and that's what this is about. Everything pro wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans, and that's how we keep it. So thank you all for joining us. We are signing out. We will be back tomorrow with night two of WrestleMania 39. Peace.